in this mini lecture i shall be talking about the computer starting or technically known as the booting process when the computer is already on and you are using it the operating system is in complete control of the hardware and you are able to get things done but as you are aware the operating system resides in the main memory called as the ram but since the power is switched off at that point ram does not contain the operating system so when you power, start the power supply of the computer the operating system is not in control of your pc so the whole process of doing this booting process is to take the operating system which resides on your secondary memory and load it onto the main memory it's a highly technical process but i shall just give you a very high level overview so that you tend to understand how the computer booting process works so as i had already told you in order for the computer to become usable you have to have operating system but when there is no power supply or when you have yet to start the power button the operating system is not there so the job of the booting is primarily to get the operating system loaded into the main memory so what booting involves is booting involves a few steps to check whether all the hardware is working properly then followed by the loading of the operating system now broadly if you try to understand what is the booting process booting process broadly involves checking the working of the most common hardware like the keyboard your monitor your speakers your memory your cpu and so on then followed by loading the operating system so in this mini lecture i shall just be giving you a very high level talk about the booting process but it is more than adequate for you to get a very complete understanding of the process in this video i have slightly simplified the technical accuracy so that your conceptual clarity is enhanced if i make it too technical then you would probably not understand what is really important to be understood so let me take a look at it what happens from step 0 i have started numbering the steps from step 0 so at step 0 what you will do is let us say you start the main power supply the three pin power supply which supplies power to the pc or the laptop once the main power supply is done the laptop or the pc is still not on because there is always a button on the pc or a laptop which you got to push down and the light will show up so so that the pc or the laptop actually begins to start the first step what happens after the power is switched on is the power is supplied to all the electronic and electromechanical components on the motherboard as well as the other hardware devices because without power they cannot work so first power is supplied to every component on the motherboard followed by all the other hardware devices to allow them to work now at times when you switch on the power it is very much possible that the power supply is not of a suitable quality in the sense the voltage may be low there may be a lot of power fluctuation there may be some problem in the quality of the power supply being supplied to the pc or the laptop in this case what happens is the internal circuitry will detect okay it will detect that the power supply is not of the required quality it will signal a power failure failure message sorry power failure message and the starting process is aborted or halted at this point of time because without power it doesn't make sense to continue from the next part onwards you will come across the role of a eprom chip so what happens here is you can take a look at the computer motherboard you will see a specific or a special read only memory called as the bios or the basic input output system now this basic input output system contains all the code that is instructions and data required to check the hardware functioning and also it's got a small piece of program or a code which searches for the operating system on your hard disk and loads the program onto your sorry loads the operating system onto your main memory 
Now this BIOS or basic input output system which takes care of the booting process after the power has been supplied till the operating system is loaded is an EEPROM. It makes sense. Why it should be an EEPROM? Because in future if the machine is upgraded with new hardware components or something changes or there are bugs in the BIOS, you can allow for corrections and upgrades. BIOS always comes pre-installed with the PC you are buying. All right. So you don't have to do anything for buying the BIOS. It comes pre-installed with the PC or laptop you are purchasing. Now let's take a look at what happens in step one. Now in step one, what happens is at the very first thing, the CPU is at the time of assembling or developing the laptop or the PC, it is configured or it is made in such a way that the first thing the CPU does is it goes to a specific location in the main memory. For example, it could say jump to address FFF0, which could be some address in the memory. At that address, what happens is the CPU then executes a jump instruction. That means a transfer of control from here to the BIOS address. So what happens is, suppose I'm at address 10,000, it says go to a particular address in this read-only memory, which is the basic input output system. Once it goes to the ROM BIOS, then what happens is the CPU first reads data from the ROM. Okay, it reads data, that means which data is nothing but instructions and data. So it reads instructions from the ROM. Now this instruction first performs something called as the power on self test. What this power on self test is, this is like a doctor checking the health of various hardware components. That's why it is called as a diagnosis of major hardware components. So in this diagnosis, you will have noticed that the keyboard light blinks. Okay, sometimes on the PC you will see it is writing onto memory and reading from the memory. It says checksum. Okay, it checks the connection connectivity of the hard disk. It checks the connectivity of the keyboard. It checks the connectivity of the speakers. So it does basic checking of the hardware to see if the hardware is working. So what happens in this stage is all the connections, important devices like your display monitor, if a monitor is not connected, okay, of course you can't know anything because you can't see anything, but it will check for the keyboard connection. It will check for whether the video card is working whether the speakers are working, the main memory is working at, and so on and so forth. Now for main memory, what it does is it writes some contents to the RAM and reads it back and checks whether it, what it wrote is what it exactly got back. That's how it's able to verify whether the RAM is functioning properly or not. Now say what happens is, suppose your keyboard is disconnected or some memory chip is taken out or some something is wrong on the motherboard. Then what happens is you will get small beeping sounds. So different computers have different number of beeps to indicate the problem on that particular PC or laptop. So if everything is fine, generally it will do one beep and you will see the operating system loading on the screen that is welcome to Windows or Linux or whatever it is. If there is more than one beep, generally it indicates that some error is happening. Now, once this hardware diagnosis is done, then what happens is, okay, so what we call this hardware, hardware diagnosis, it's the power on self test, which checks the working of the major hardware components. Then on the BIOS chip, there is a set of instructions called as the bootstrap loader. This bootstrap loader is a series of instructions which is coded or programmed to search for the operating system on your hard disk or whatever device you have chosen. It could be the CD drive, DVD drive or floppy disk or whatever it is. So from there, this bootstrap loader will search for the starting location where the operating system is there. So it will, its job is to locate and help the operating system load itself into the computer. So at this point, once the operating system is loaded, then slowly the operating system takes control of the computer and now you do not need anything from the BIOS. The word bootstrapping. Bootstrapping means initially there is no OS in the computer. Just by starting power, using the instructions in the ROM, the CPU does things on its own or the computer does things on its own or picks itself on its own or does self-improvement by its own efforts to load the OS. This is called as bootstrapping. That means picking yourself from the ground and standing up or getting ready and to move. 
Now, an important point. One of the major features of Graphic Era or a very unique feature of Graphic Era is our founder Sri Kamal Gansala ji is very very actively involved in all the academic aspects of our university. He takes care whether students are studying, what is their level and so on. So he's super active in academic part. So much so that he regularly has been taking classes for the last 25 plus years. In addition to that, he comes during exams for conducting the lab exams and most importantly taking the Viva OSE. So here what I shall do is I shall give you an example of how you should answer a question given a choice. So what happened was our best student Mr. Raju Rastogi was asked the question in during your viva how do induction motors start okay so in order to know how the induction motor start and what was Raju Rastogi's answer to that what I would suggest is I would suggest all of you to first look at the description section of this video look at the description in this particular video the description section below look at the description section below and click on the link which is shown below click on this particular link YouTube watch POU okay it's a short video of one and a half minutes watch how Mr. Rastogi is answering the question how does the induction motor start okay once so at this just before clicking on this I would advise you to pause the my video at this point watch that Raju Rastogi's answer to induction motor after watching that come back so I believe you have paused now and you have come back okay so now the moral of the story what the moral of the story here is I believe you have seen Mr. Rastogi's answer now when chairman sir asks you how does a computer boot up I don't want you to answer sir I press the button tuck I push the button push sir when I when the power supply started I saw a fan sound then I saw light pick pick then I saw different things tuck tuck I heard some sounds and then I heard, saw the message windows operating system that is not the way how you would answer the question on computer booting process so don't be a Raju Rastogi of graphic era try to answer in a technical and sensible way with that I hope you had a little fun and let's see in the next unit which is programming logic <laughs>